Oklahoma is coming off one of the most dominating performances in all of college football this season, but can they do it for a second straight week with a shot at the Big 12 championship on the line? Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horowitz, glad to be with you on the college football previews presented by AT&T. The Bedlam series continues. Oklahoma going to Oklahoma State, and the Sooners have won five consecutive in this rivalry. Let's bring in Spencer Tillman to break it down, who played in the Bedlam football game, uh, let's say four <laughs> times. <laughs> Spence, uh, glad to have you with us. Uh, when we talk about this, uh, we talk about Oklahoma, Spence. It's the argument that everybody has been having all week long because they are not ahead of Texas right now in the BCS. But if they win this game, make the argument that the Sooners deserve to be ahead of the Longhorns in the BCS and thus playing for the Big 12 championship game. Well, it, maybe let's start with the point of contention to kind of put everything in context. Everybody is saying, at least down in these parts in Texas, that by virtue of winning a head-to-head -head battle on the field uh, during that second week or third week in October over Oklahoma, Texas deserves to be there. They almost speak of it in terms of a rite, a passage. And I, there's some val validity to that. But let me give you a little history. Back in 1985, uh, we finished 11-1. and one. Our only loss was to Miami, a 27-14 home loss, which to me is much, much worse than a 10-point loss at a neutral site. We go ahead and run the table, just as a point of minutiae here. Troy Aikman breaks his tibia. Some little kid named Jamel Holloway comes in. We win the national championship. Got some help down the end of the stretch with uh, Tennessee upsetting then number two Miami. Yes, the same Miami team that defeated us early in the year. We won the national championship, despite the fact that Miami beat us head to head in Norman, Oklahoma, and did it decisively. So that presupposition doesn't hold up. This is a very dynamic and fluid time that we're in in college football, okay? If you were to play Ole Miss right now and play them against Florida, ask most people that are reasonable who would win that contest. Hands down, Florida would win it. And I have no problem people using that information to assess or cast their votes with who should be the number one, two, or three team in the nation. Things change, and so you have to make your decisions accordingly. All right, Spence, so what has changed the most for Oklahoma over the last five, six weeks since they lost that game to Texas? Uh, if you, you force me to pinpoint something, I would say it's their running game. It's up nearly 38%. Uh, that productivity from uh, Parker and, and DeMarco Murray has been absolutely astounding, and that's given them a modicum of balance that they didn't have in their close call and, of course, in the game against Texas when they kind of constrained the run game. So I would think the run game is the most important thing that has helped them, and let's not uh, underestimate what they've done defensively. Brent Venables, their defensive coordinator, and Bob Stoops did a tremendous job of putting the game plan in defensively with players who were, many of them, number three on the depth chart, particularly at linebacker. They have been solid, but the one thing that jumps out is their run game. Yeah, that's certainly been a big part and a big help for Sam Bradford. And then, Spence, you bring in the question here. Uh, can Oklahoma State defensively hang in with this Oklahoma offense knowing what Sam Bradford has done? Well, with the run game for Oklahoma being as stout as it has become in the last four weeks in particular, that becomes a difficult challenge. I think the one thing you do uh, acknowledge is that they do have balance now, and in, in that regard, they look a lot like Oklahoma State, who has their own issues, though, with achieving balance this week because of a key injury for them. But this Oklahoma team now becomes balance, and any team that achieves balance, no matter in what form, if it's Florida, who's doing it with speed on the perimeter, and maybe not a traditional straight at your running game, it's almost impossible to win the matchup in terms of numbers. So they become difficult, if not impossible, to totally stop, Jason. And nobody has stopped Sam Bradford all season. Now That's you right. got to contend with that rushing attack. It's a different story. But Spence, you played in this you played in this series when Oklahoma dominated Oklahoma State. 15 out of 16. Uh, OU had beaten Oklahoma State early in the 2000s. Mm -hmm. The Pokes came back. They won a couple in a row. And it, and it led to the hiring year uh, of Bob Stoops, wins a national title. The Pokes in the past have, have knocked off Oklahoma when they had chances for Big 12 title chance, na chance mm -hmm. for a national title chance. What do they have to do in this game to pull off that type of upset again? Well, they've got to disrupt the continuity on the offensive side of the ball. The good thing is they have them in Stillwater. Uh, they don't have that crowd advantage. I'm talking about the Sooners now that they enjoyed last week against Texas Tech. If Oklahoma State can disrupt the execution of Oklahoma with the loud stadium, because Oklahoma runs that no huddle offense, communication is going to be critical. If they can get that crowd loud, they're going to have a chance to disrupt what they're trying to do. They do have a silent count kind of uh, system in place as well, which may mitigate some of that. But they've got to keep Oklahoma off the field. And conversely, Oklahoma State has got to stay on the football field with their balanced attack. I think they're passing about maybe 2,547 yards. They got about 2,800 yards rushing. That is about as balanced 
balance as you can possibly get. Do that, you'll have a chance to be competitive at home against Oklahoma. And they have the seventh highest scoring offense in all of college football. Of course, that took a hit when they lost to Texas Tech yeah. and scored uh, only 20, and then they only scored 30 against Colorado. But yes, you're right. They do, if they can stay balanced, they keep Oklahoma off the field, something Texas Tech was not able to do this past weekend. All right, Spence, it's uh, the Battle of Bedlam. It's uh, five straight wins for Oklahoma. It's a chance at the Big 12 title on the line. It's all everything there. Does Oklahoma go in and roll, or is it a close game? The short answer is I think they win. You got to look at this series <laughs> kind of like the Iron Bowl, okay? It's always competitive no matter who's dominated in terms of wins and losses over any stretch of period of time. I think Oklahoma will win. They've got too much at stake on the line. Possible chance for another national championship. Well, the other thing on the line for Oklahoma State, a 10-win season, something they haven't had yeah. since 1988 First when Barry seven. Sanders yeah. won the Heisman Trophy. Mm -hmm. Spencer Tillman, mm -hmm. thank you very much, sir. We'll see you on Saturday. All right, Jason, we'll see you, buddy. And folks, for more on this game, be sure to stay with CBSSports.com. And don't forget about SEC Live on CBSSports.com. Every game you'll see this weekend, you'll see uh, on CBS, that is, you'll see on SEC Live, presented by AT&T, three of them this weekend. Friday, you got Arkansas and LSU. Saturday, you have Georgia Tech and Georgia. And then you also have the Iron Bowl that Spencer just made mention of, Auburn and Alabama. And we'll see if the Crimson Tide can stay undefeated on CBS and on CBSSports.com. For Spencer Tillman, I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care.